Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tech Summit Podcast, episode 19. I'm Chris. I'm Francisco. And welcome back to the podcast, sponsored now by ProGuard Alcohol Wipes. Which you can get at your local family dollar for only $5.49. Now, of course, if you are listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other platforms, we have our information and social media in the description there. If you are watching here on YouTube, however, we have the description right on the bottom of the video here. That's right. Now, uh, before we start with anything else, I do want to sort of uh, have a bit of an acknowledgement here. Okay, what is this acknowledgement? This acknowledgement that the quest is now officially over. Oh. Someone's plight for the PlayStation 5 has finally finished. It did, it did. I am officially a changed man. I've achieved all of my goals, and I can now die happy. You finally have a PS5. I do finally have a PS5. All digital, but I do have a PS5. All digital PS5. Yeah. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. Now, please tell us. (laughs) Where'd you get it from? (laughs) Oh, you know, online, somewhere. (laughs) eBay. Uh, I unfortunately... So uh, I do actually have the review already ready, and uh, it is scheduled to go up in very early February. But essentially, the story is that uh, I could not find a PlayStation 5 from a reputable seller. Regardless of resources... (laughs) <laughs> it was just more waiting and waiting and waiting. It was just wasn't going to happen. E- even when I did get any kind of stock alerts, I was already a, t- a few seconds too late to get into the site and click on add, add to cart because that's not good enough. You still have to go back into your cart and purchase. And it just wasn't happening. So eBay was my only choice. And me having the job that I have, I do need the PlayStation 5 so that I can actually make content around it. So I ended up, uh, you, you know, paying a very high percentage <laughs> above, ev- above MSRP. <laughs> and I don't say that with any kind of pride at all. Uh, but yeah, I finally have the PlayStation 5 and I've been enjoying Demon's Souls remake. I'll, I'll, I'll say that much. I'm being shamed on my own podcast. Can you guys believe this? Yes, you are. <laughs> Yes, you are, because I'm going to note that, yes, we did. We, you were, in fact, given many resources when it comes to getting a PS5, and multiple times when you were given those resources, we heard from you. I'll be patient now. I'm going to wait. I'm pretty sure you even said that on the podcast. Oh, yeah. I'll be I patient. Th- <laughs> I'll I'm wait. I'm pretty sure. Behind you. Oh. Oh. Oh, goodness. I don't know. I don't know how that Actually, that works. Okay, sweet. Okay. It made the change all on its own. That works. That was five powers. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, you were given multiple opportunities and multiple resources to get a PS5. Uh, there was a point when there was a stock alert going on for a PS5, and as my friend was going through it, I was telling you in real time, hey, we're five minutes away from the drop. That did happen, We're yes. three minutes away from the drop. We're one minute away from the drop. Mm-hmm. And you respond back saying... Nah, it's okay. I can wait. I'll be patient. It's perfectly fine. You're, I did mean it. You were so gung ho <laughs> about getting a PS5. <laughs> then you decided, nah, I'll be patient. <laughs> and then you decide to stop being patient and give in to the exact issue that we've been complaining about for the entire duration of this podcast. Yes. History. And that makes me a hypocrite. You gave in to. <laughs> The scalpers. I know. It makes me sad. Uh, Twice. (laughs) Twice. Twice, yes. You did it with the 3090 too. Yeah, but that, I was a lot more justified in because uh, those rumors about the 3080 Ti, highly unlikely to come back and and stock only seems to be getting worse regarding GPUs. Is there not a drop happening in February? Well, that is now up for debate. Now it's not entirely... Uh, possible that we might be able to get one because even then, like, stock is still super limited when that comes up. Right. Yeah. However, I'm still going to dunk on you about this because you got a 3090. You yeah. Didn't, you didn't need a 3090. Well, considering how fast uh, my render times have been when it comes to rendering videos and stuff in DaVinci Resolve, 
Now I feel like I do need a 39 day. It was a nice feature, but you weren't exactly, you know, crying poor with a 2080. No, but I was having still a lot of stuttering issues in Resolve. So I did need an upgrade, but maybe not a 3090. I think a 3080 would have been just fine. However, with the addition of, you know, having all this VRAM available, I do have a lot more leeway. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Still gave into scalpers, though. I did. I did. Twice. And Twice. <laughs> there we go. Twice. Yeah, twice. And uh, mm -hmm. with that, we are now also going to announce that going forward, Francisco is no longer allowed to ever complain about scalpers ever again. I can... I can. I'm just supposed to sit here and listen? Yes. If there's, <laughs> if there's a scalping issue, I can talk about it. But Francisco is no longer allowed to ever talk about scalping ever again, lest he get dunked on with aggression. Oh, like beat up? Oh, goodness. I mean, I've, uh, I think I can, I can take a couple of beatings, but okay, let's go for it. And It'll be an MMA match. And now... With that public roasting <laughs> concluded, you have some news for us. I do. I do ha have some news. Uh, and since I'm not allowed to talk about scalping, let's move on to the next topic. Nope. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I, I mean, the scalping part actually comes after the first topic, but the first topic is essentially going to be uh, that Apple's... Uh, upcoming MacBooks are more more than likely going to have MagSafe come back to uh, uh, to the USB-C ports for charging, or at the very least, it might actually be a standalone port. Like, it might actually be straight up like the OG MagSafe that they're used to seeing, but not entirely sure. Uh, however, uh, according to this article from Bloomberg, uh, it is something that we should be expecting at some point. Mm. And it's not only that, but apparently we might actually be... Uh, seeing the touch bar go away. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that could be happening. Now, I don't think that they're replacing that with a touch screen, unfortunately, which is a shame. I think that they should do that. But then I guess I would require kind of an overhaul of Mac OS anyway, because Mac OS is just not intended to be used, uh, you know, with any kind of touch display or touch input in mind or anything like that. Why are you smiling at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> You're still thinking about the shaming corner that you put me in. Yes, I am. <laughs> It's fine. It's funny to dare. I'm joking. Now, with that said, uh, now as someone <laughs> as someone who's not actually familiar when it comes to Mac devices personally, <laughs> tell me about Mac Lock. Or Mac Lock. Mac Lock. Mag is safe. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm always here in case you need to be corrected. It's okay. You can dunk on my ignorance. <laughs> but nothing beats my own ignorance at this point. No, you, know, you were not ignorant. <laughs> you knew full well what you were doing and you did it anyway. Okay. The first time I was slightly intoxicated in my decision with the 3090. Was I not there though? You you were there. I was there and I was being like, don't do it. <laughs> but let's just say that I, that I was under heavier influence. <laughs> Orange liqueur. <laughs> yes. It hits. It, it it's a uh, blood orange. It, it it was a great flavor. God bless. I want I want it again. It was sponsored on the New Year's special. Yes, sponsored unofficially. Um, but yeah, we are expecting to see these upgrades to uh, the upcoming MacBooks. Now, what I'm more excited about is actually to see if Apple is going to be bringing their own silicon to the 15 inch model. Well, the 16 inch model of uh, of MacBook Pros now, I should say, because. They actually went from 15 inches to 16 inches in order to improve on like thermals and things like that. Uh, but I very much want to know if they're ready to go in that direction now. I don't think that they are because I'll explain. So the M1 chip is Apple's own silicon. It right. is re replacing the Intel processors of, right. of your. Uh, so now MacBooks are not going to have uh, Intel CPUs anymore. It's going to be all Apple's own silicon. So all built in house. Which means that for now, we can expect a lot of compatibility issues with a lot of other software uh, because pretty much everything is made already to work with Intel. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Apple's own silicon, that's brand new, mm. at least in regards to like something like a desktop operating system like, like Mac OS. It would be completely different if we were talking about like something like the iPad Pro, which does indeed have Apple's own silicon, something that has been in the works for a long time, but it's also a mobile uh, uh, uh 
operating system. It's iPad OS. So with that said, their 16 inch line of laptops is like their pro line, like their actual pro line. They've been using as of late Core i9s in there because they are supposed to be for actual professionals who are on the go. Not so much nowadays, but you know, in theory on the go. So now my question would be, can they make their own silicon at some point in 2021 that can actually replace at least a core i7, like a six core core i7? I think the compatibility issues that you bring up is honestly the biggest sort of, not a red flag for me, but like sort of a caution, yellow flag, we'll call it a yellow flag. Um, because I don't know, it's, it's like, so a major draw for a lot of these things is often productivity. Yeah. And going into my little 3D brain, um, there's no guarantee that M1 chips could be used for CPU rendering for a while. We don't yeah. know that. At least, I mean, Apple doesn't have like any first party uh, 3D rendering software or anything like that. So we, we can't really count on that. No. But we're mostly referring to things like Blender, Maya, and even Cinema 4D if you're inclined. Um, but yeah, like we, we certainly can't really count on the CPUs to, to be so effective when it comes to that. I think there's still yeah, a long way least. to come. Yeah. Yeah. At least it's entirely possible that it can in fact do, you know, get the job done later on and down the road. The problem is when these M1 chips are really dropping right now, um, are they compatible with Arnold, for example, Arnold being the CPU renderer for, um, Maya, like, is there going to be Arnold support or M1 support? I'm Arnold. pretty sure that there's going to be some kind of integration because, I mean, industry follows Apple. And right now the industry is, you know, uh, I'm sure that at most firms uh, or at, at, at most studios are probably using Macs, to be frank. Like Mac Pros, for instance, or even just uh, uh, like the, the higher-end iMacs. I mean, we did see that, for instance, in some of the computer labs that are old school and at the school before that, we saw a bunch of trash can Mac Pros being used for 3D work. I'm trying to remember uh, from like those promotional videos or images from places like Disney, I'm trying to remember if they were using Macs or PCs. I would venture to think that they were that, that they must have been using Macs because... It might have again. actually been an even split depending on the industry. I mean, it depends on the uh, company, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I could very much believe that. At Disney, I can see them kind of going at the macro, but this is all speculation, of course, on my end. Now, with that said, uh, I mean, those uh, those trash can Mac, Mac Pros were using uh, anywhere from Core i7s to Xeon CPUs, uh, definitely not Apple's own silicon. So this whole thing is brand new to actual desktops, right. or I should say, well, well laptops with, uh, t uh, with desktop operating systems. So there is still a ways to go, definitely. But I'm excited to see what Apple has in mind for this and how they actually end up moving forward with their own silicon. Because the benefits currently of going with an M1 chip uh, powered MacBook, whether it's the Air or the 13-inch Pro, is that you get things like, for instance, uh, much better battery life than what you, you got before because it was made to work with, with Mac OS specifically. Right. And you also get better performance when it comes to first-party software like Final Cut Pro. People reported a lot of great results with rendering and just like overall performance using an M1 chip in Final Cut Pro. And that's Apple's own uh, editing software. Mm -hmm. I'm looking here uh, and currently stably M1 chips can support Cinema 4D, obviously. Nice. Cinema 4D, obviously Final Cut Pro, actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, Affinity Photo, yeah. for people who use the Affinity products. They have beta builds for DaVinci Resolve. Ooh, sweet. Yeah, DaVinci Resolve. Uh, Octane X, mm -hmm. so GPU. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like they're still making strides, actually. I think my, my thing is just it's a GPU, not really CPU. Oh, uh, I mean, the M1 chip has integrated graphics only. M1, G M1 GPU. Oh, there is an M1 GPU. Yeah, you're right. And yeah, yeah. in Unity. Unity is using that. Uh, coming later, Adobe, Autodesk. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, a note of caution. I never heard of that company before. <laughs> <laughs> Autodesk? Okay, so uh, 
Yeah, Maya. Yeah, Maya and Sketchbook. And AutoCAD. AutoCAD as well. A lot of a, big. A lot of you know, a lot of people use AutoCAD for yeah. architecture and stuff like that. So it definitely seems like this is actually on the pipeline. You know, like like they're it's, definitely. I mean, working it on has it. to be. Yeah. It has to be coming eventually. Even I, again, you you like you said before, a lot of places are going to be using Macs for their stuff, but not everyone does. But yeah. even still, you do have to be prepared for that. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me that with architecture that a lot of them are probably using like Windows Seven still or something. Like that. Oh geez. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I, I want to think not, not because 7 isn't not. even getting updates anymore. So, I mean, like... There you they go. Would be Does, it doesn't mess up the software. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, I guess There's no that. updates to mess up the software. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that would just, like, erase your entire computer. Okay, so I'm seeing here. Uh, What's happened to enough people? Okay, so there's beta builds for mm -hmm. M1 support with uh, Premiere and Audition. Okay. And then stable ones in the first half. And I'm guessing places like, yeah, Photoshop, is feature limited, but there is a beta, it says here. Okay. You know what? As long as this is all in the works, this actually does keep my worries down. Right. For sure. And I thought that this would be maybe years ahead. But in this case, it seems like they've been working on this pretty early on. Mm. So, yeah, I'm honestly ha happy to see this, and it makes me even more excited to see what Apple brings about when it comes to their higher-end pro models. This is a funky one. Although Adobe also featured Autodesk software in its live streams, Fusion 360 this week and Maya in its original Apple Silicon announcement, it was not available for native M1 support. Okay. So that they showed it off, but it sounds like that one might be a little further off. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, in any case, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, your next topic. <laughs> my next topic. Your next topic. Uh, so the next one we have is actually regarding uh, PlayStation 5 socks specifically. <laughs> and this uh, this article was coming from inverse.com, and this is uh, more so regarding your socks coming to Sony Direct, uh, Ant in line, Newegg. Give you some credit there. Thank you. <laughs> PlayStation 5 restocks. I imagine a lot of people are happy with that. Yeah. I, mm, uh, I guess I don't care so much anymore. Uh, <laughs> Keep I just, going. I just wanted to see your reaction on that. <laughs> Keep going. I'm going. I'm going. So I'm here. Uh, I'm on inverse.com now, and yeah, like like we were seeing that now, a lot of retails uh, retailers are indeed preparing to bring in more stock. So we have things like uh, PlayStation Direct. Obviously, they should be the first ones to bring in more stock. Uh, Ant in line, which I've never heard of up until recently. I don't know if we have any in New York. Uh, Newegg and more coming January 2021. So at some point this month, and I would venture to think very soon, considering that we're already very much in the middle. Newegg. Newegg is in a similar position as Antoline. The site has offered PlayStation 5 bundles over the past few months, making them one of the smaller retailers to watch. While there is no word on an official restock, some fans notice that Newegg now displays coming soon text on some of its bundles. That might just be a bit of generic text, but we'll take what we can get at this point. Make sure to set up some restock alerts here to be safe. Ye but by the way, you can try doing that, but don't be surprised if you get an in-stock alert an hour after they sell out. Right. Because that happened a lot. Again. It happens. A lot of my pain came from all of this expiration that it I It happens. <laughs> however, however, now I'm going to come in for Go the uh, assist here. There are, in fact, some services and Twitter accounts that you could be looking at in order to get possible restock information. While Francisco continues to go on with the news, I'm going to find that stuff. Sure thing. So we have Target over here. Uh, Target was the main retailer to watch headed into January and the final week of December. Rumors swirl that the PlayStation 5 restock was imminent. Uh, we, we did actually get a couple of restocks uh, over the course of December, if I'm not wrong. Uh those of which were pretty impossible for somebody like me to get their hand on. Mm. Uh, that, uh, yeah, like essentially like 3 a.m. launches e Eastern time. And there was one uh, that they specifically note for December 28th. Uh, and, you know, we are very likely to actually see a lot more stock uh, for Target coming in. Same thing with Best Buy, since they actually did have uh, another drop on January 7th, which... We should expect them to come back again with some more soon. GameStop, they like to sell their stuff in bundles, even though they also had a drop on January 7th. And that was actually the day uh, that I tried pretty hard to see if I can actually get one from any of these places. Mm. But one issue 
that I actually had when it came to following Twitter accounts is that sometimes I would get the notification uh, for uh, for their tweets like half an hour after they had already posted. And that was, and like, it's not their fault. Obviously. Yeah, like it's either the fault of Twitter or the fault of my own phone. But something was going on there I and imagine, I was always late. I imagine there are people that are going to be actually like paying attention to like F5-ing or whatever on there. No, oh, yeah. Um, And on that note, I know it's, it's going to sound kind of funky now that you just basically just said, these Twitter accounts don't work. <laughs> no, go they for do. it, go for it. They, no, they do, because my friend has been able to get quite a few PS5s, and what he does is he gets the PS5s and then sort of gives them to friends and stuff like that who are looking for them. Yeah. You know, he doesn't... He doesn't... He doesn't. <laughs> you know, he's kind of like a Robin Hood. He's a good person. Take away, <laughs> take, a, take away from the scalped and give back to the people, I guess. Yes. Uh, anyway, these Twitter accounts, three of them, uh, there is at YT Next Gen Gaming, mm. at Spiel Times, S P I E L Times, and at PS5 Stock Updates. Uh, yeah. These Twitter accounts are really good, supposedly, when it comes to PS5 uh, drop updates, as well as other deals I just saw on. Uh, Spiel times they were also giving a uh, little giving I uh, notifications on deals for things mm-hmm. like you know certain games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is apparently forty bucks on PS Five right now right um, charging ports media con- media remotes all that stuff mm-hmm. um, again I I personally don't have experience because I'm not in the market for a PS Five anytime soon right um, but that's what my friend's been using he's been able to do fairly well for himself when it comes to securing a ps5 for him and the people he cares about and stuff like that so he must be very good at, at a fiving as well probably yeah i'm unfortunately very slow when it comes to a fiving uh now with that said uh an, a, another account to look out for is, is, is also warrior 64 and a lot of people have had a lot of good experiences with that account warrior 64 is really good yeah for game deals in general and all that stuff but Apparently his PS5 stuff has been a little shaky compared to some of the others. It it it's been slower for sure. Um, because sometimes they drop while he's asleep, for instance. Well, yeah. most people are actually asleep, so you know, not exactly his fault. In fact, not his fault at all. Really, yeah, no, it's not yeah. his fault at all. He's a hu- he's yeah. human. Right. I, a lot of people seem to often forget about that because of how often he puts out the deals and stuff like that. But he is a human being behind that. Yes. That it, little Exactly. And honestly, I would rather have some updates of some kind, even if they're a, a, a little bit late, because it shows me, you know, that there's at least a chance. Yeah. Yeah. So if anything, so like I would give them a follow, but I would also follow all, all of the other uh, accounts. that you, Even I, in general, just follow Wario64 so you can at least bolster your uh, PS5 library with all the deals he'll be finding you. Yes. And uh, he does actually post about those quite often, in fact, and he's very much on the nose about it. And of course, whatever you do. Don't give in to the scalpers. Do not. <laughs> and I do actually mention that in in my review. I'm essentially saying it's not worth buying a scalp PlayStation 5 if you're at all just a gamer. Thank goodness he has a head on his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used that shampoo in quite a while. I actually switched. Anyway, <laughs> you have another piece of news because... Uh, another very one. And, and this news actually pertains to... CES, yes, which we talked about on the last episode. Yes, uh, so we were talking about more so our predictions of what would be coming to CES, right. uh, 2021, and this time now that CES already passed, we have what is honestly the most exciting thing to me, of course, that is going to be Razor's Project Hazel, uh, RGB face mask, which I am absolutely in the market for. An RGB face mask. Yes. Please tell me more. Let me tell you more. I it's- like I like the pretty lights. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, the, the, these lights are very nice, in fact. And uh, just as I was scrolling around Twitter, I actually just saw a tweet about it, in fact, uh, where Razer was promoting their Project Hazel, and they better release it soon while the fad uh, is still last. I know, right? The, for some reason, face masks have gotten very fashionable in the past year. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you have to add some personality to it if you want to, uh, you, you know, like, feel a little nice about wearing one. Uh, and I, for one, am definitely going to be looking out, especially considering the packaging that, that this thing might be coming on, uh-huh. uh, coming in, sorry. Um, and it does look quite nice. Now, it will get a, a ton of attention. I mean, look at this. This is 
it is uh, a semi-transparent uh, face mask. It is going to be mo mostly black, and uh, uh, and the filters on the side are going to be RGB lit. I do wonder if they're compatible with Razer Synapse for customization. I am going to say it being transparent is a little funky to me. Why so? I don't know. I like the idea of it just being fully opaque and just not seeing my mouth alongside the RGB. <laughs> Making me look like a weird Pikachu. But I, I mean, I guess so. Uh, though, I want to say here it looks more so like 80% opacity, okay. uh, which isn't too bad in my opinion. Right. Uh, and, it, and it does appear to be more so like a glossy surface. So, you know, if there's a light out, it's going to still reflect like bounce off and smack somebody in the eyes. Uh, but I'm very excited about this. I very much want now, it. Now, I have some questions. <laughs> What's up? Because it's, it's basically just, it is just an RGB face mask. Yeah. So I have some questions. What's up? Number one, price. Price, that is also one of my biggest questions. So there's no answer yet. No answer yet, but people think that it's going to be very expensive and... I'm also kind of on the camp that it might be, but I, 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 probably, I don't probably know. too expensive to justify buying. Maybe. I mean, it depends, you know. I could make a video out of it, of course, considering now, that it is a Razer product. Question number two. What's up? How do you wash this thing when there's electronics inside it? You would probably want to use one of these wipes to do that. Though you would, I personally, I feel like you should be doing more than that when it comes to washing a face mask, especially for the reasons why people are wearing them. Yeah, like if you have to use a reusable face mask, you probably want to wash it in like a washing machine or something. Oh no, this would not be washable in the exactly. washing machine. Exactly, that's the problem. Now. Definitely not. Yeah, so who knows? Maybe they're going to sell cleaning kits that are actually uh, meant to be used with this separately. I could see them selling it separately rather than including it being razor mm -hmm. but yeah like that is actually a very important question like how would you be cleaning these and if they even took that into consideration at all um now according to this it does have uh built-in uv sanitation so <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, for... <laughs> it is uh, it's still questionable. So according to this, <clears throat> of course, with the C word, it's still an ongoing issue. It is possible that we could see Razer actually pushing forward with a mask of this type, especially if the demand is there. Despite its RGB additions, a mask is really an innovative product, <laughs> offering rechargeable vent uh, ventilators and built-in UV sanitation. There are also other great features like the light-up mouth area and uh, the microphone that helps others hear what you're saying <laughs> despite being muffled by the mask material itself. Okay, so all of those things <laughs> actually come off as more appealing to me than the RGB. Because you're, you, you're mentioning RGB face mask. I'm thinking, okay, so it's a mask with pretty lights on it. This stuff, on the other hand, actually makes it sound legitimately really good. Mm -hmm. And depending on the price, yes. possibly. If it is 60 below, we're talking. I don't see that happening, to Anything be higher, and we're going a little too far. <laughs> but, but, like, those are, those are actually some really interesting things. The UV yeah. sanitation, I'm curious as to how that works. Um, but things like the light up mouth area, I'm guessing like to illuminate the mouth, I'm guessing, I don't know. I, I'm not uh, excited about that. Rechargeable ventilators though is a really big thing. I think mm -hmm. microphone, I don't, from my experience, I don't feel like your, your voice is really that muffled. I mean, this is a, a different mask. kind of mask though. Uh, because like, I mean, for me, I usually wear a cloth mask. My, my voice isn't really muffled by that kind of mask, but this is, it appears to be like a plastic covering to it almost so that that would have more of an effect i think maybe i don't know yeah have people sounded that much more muffled when they're wearing face shields uh well i i, I i've never spoken to anybody that's wearing a face shield actually mm. but i i i would guess no because there's quite a bit of distance between your mouth and the actual uh, shield itself even then um i just also wonder about the microphone quality yeah, yeah, right. Like it, <laughs> if it sounds like a 1992 Nokia phone or something like that, it's mm. not really all that great. It, it, Excuse me. I mean, if it sounds like I'm, I'm just speaking through like a a, a karaoke microphone, you know, like that kind. Then you know, I, 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 I'm not too excited about that. But either way, I want it for the pretty lights. It's, and, a, it's still, it's still very interesting. Yes, it is extremely interesting, and I, I want to, I want to keep my eye on it. Mm -hmm. Um. 
of course, we are going to cover some more stuff from CES, yeah. at least in the next episode. Maybe, yeah. who knows, maybe beyond, depending on how much we just learned. But, of, of course. Um, I will. I do want to note a very small thing before we go, of course. Sure. Uh, that I said in the past that I was very curious about the microwave. Oh, microwave developments because i was in the market for a microwave now i have in fact bought a microwave now uh, an lg neo chef so it's never too early for an upgrade however <laughs> we did in fact actually get some microwave news at ces Sweet. so bless my beating heart <laughs> sharp has come out with or is planning to come out with a smart microwave with alexa integration <gasps> I'll be honest with you. I thought that was already a thing. I I honestly didn't. It's kind of exciting. I thought <laughs> I honestly thought that there was already a dev- like microwaves that had Alexa integration. Everything seems to have Alexa integration anyway. Um, but yeah, Sharp mm-hmm. is in fact putting out a smart microwave with Alexa integration. I don't think there's that many other features particularly noteworthy at the time being. Um, Alexa. Alexa is a big deal here. Alexa is a big deal, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. You know, I guess that aside from Alexa, you know, there isn't too much more to this microwave as far as uh, as we know. But still, at the current it is moment, cool. at the current moment, at the current moment, yes. We'll uh, we'll keep a sharp eye on them, and we'll find out a little bit more. Uh, ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because get it? Because the microwave came from Sharp. That came out really loud. <laughs> but it's okay. You know, it Living doesn't matter. Way. But with that said, thank you very much for stopping by, everybody. Tonight's episode was a ton of fun, or today, I suppose, be- because it is so bright out. But thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, this has been episode 19 hold of the on. Tech Summit Podcast. Hold and... on, hold on. We also forgot, though. If you guys are watching on YouTube, the social media is right down over here. Yes. And if you guys are listening on other platforms, we all have all of that social media info in the respective descriptions. Of course. We are once again sponsored by ProGuard Alcohol Wipes. Which you could purchase at your local family dollar for $5.49. Family $5. Possibly a five below as well. (laughs) But yeah, you know. And we are going to be covering some more CES stuff in the coming episode or two. We'll see. We Mm -hmm. are back to twice a week. We are. mention that. Indeed. So you're going to be seeing our faces and hearing our voices a lot more often. Tuesday, uh, Wednesdays and Sundays. Yes. With that said, I am Chris. I'm Francisco. All right. Good night. Travel well. Enjoy.